walking into the studio now is a personal friend, an icon, a legend. Yeah. He's got merch with him, the whole thing. <laughs> hey. He comes in passing out hey. treats. Hey. Ronnie Dunn Thank of you, Brooks sir. and Thank Dunn you. is here. Hey, do you know Ronnie, and as you're doing this, I'll tell a story. <laughs> I went and I bought an old Brooks and Dunn shirt, like from the 90s. You didn't, you didn't give me anything. No, I got you one. Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> like from the 90s. I and I. your lovely wife one. Yeah, you have her shirt? Yeah. Well, have a seat right there. You have a microphone she right there. Wear, you know, what if I wear that? You got me a little crop top? I see her like in bikinis a lot. Yeah. That's a lot of clothes for her. Okay. <laughs> All right. Here he is. My guy in here is Ronnie Dunn. Ronnie, how are you, man? I'm good. I'm, I'm plenty good. Uh, your, the, the Brooks and Dunn merch is so expensive, like from the 90s. Like, I, I just bought a shirt that I saw online. And it wasn't like seven dollars. It's probably four times what you sold it for in the market. Oh, it table. makes us mad. We go online and look at it and get to find all the retro stuff. And it's like a hundred and fifty bucks for a shirt or something like that. You go to eBay and find it. Why would it make you mad though? Like you sold you sold well, it. Back we're there, not right? making that money. Right. <laughs> <laughs> do you have a bunch? If you do you have a lot of the old stuff just sitting in a warehouse somewhere? We did. We did. And I you know, when Kix and I like, you know, notoriously broke up, I got the warehouse, he got the merchandise semi and the hot air balloon. That's just kind of how we split the assets or whatever. Wait, are you making a joke? No. Okay. And uh, I thought the hot air balloon was pretty appropriate. <laughs> so <laughs> anyway, uh, we, we went through it, and I was like, all this merch had been stacked up forever. And I went through it and was like, I threw a bunch away. Just we had to clear stuff out. We were, And I was like, I'd give it, you know, I probably shouldn't have done it. You know when you're cleaning stuff out at your house or wherever and – you, you throw it away, and then you, something you haven't used for years. Then you want to use it. You want it immediately. And afterwards. then, like a week later, you go, ah, "I need that." Mm-hmm. So, is it true or false? And you can tell me, urban legend, that you have you blow up that hot air balloon and leave it at your house sometimes. Up. Yeah. 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 True. Why would you do that? Why would you still blow it up at your house? Right? Just let everybody know. Just for ego. Legend. Yeah. Legend lives. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I do. You know, you've done so much. Yeah, you still have the drive to do more. I want to play uh, Broken Neon Hearts. Here's a clip of Ronnie Dunn's new song right here. Why? Why? Because you wrote this song too. Like, is it still the drive in you to create and, and record? Uh, yeah. Even though you have it all. Yeah. I mean, I I I rode the tractor around the place for you know, I don't know how many thousands of miles since we pulled out. I just get bored now, and I'm thinking, you know what? I'll just go back and start writing honky tonk beer joint songs. And my wife goes, quit writing honky tonk beer joint songs. Step out, push yourself. But this is the kind of stuff I like. It's the kind of stuff I like too. Yeah. And and do you feel like when you go and you cut a song by yourself, you're like, okay, how do we make this different than if it were, you know, you and Kicks doing the song? Or are you like, you know, I'm just doing what I do. Well, we don't have to hold court, and he was, he'd say the same thing. You know, we have to go back and forth. I don't know how bands do it. You know, with four or five members, that how they ever come to terms with with what to record. But we would do that. And, and some songs, you you know, as a duo, as a guy duo, you you couldn't, you know, you couldn't sing like love songs. Like, unless like to was, each other? It just didn't look right on stage. Yeah. <laughs> Hard to make a video. I was looking at your Instagram, and you take these pictures at rodeos. But yeah. some of the shots look like you're right in to where the bull is actually, like, goring the human or the, the, the bull rider smashing his face in the ground. How do you get so close to that? I just walk up to it. But you, but you, are you in it? Are you in the, in the actual? There's a place in Miles City, uh, Montana, and it's, it's notorious. It's, it's real organic rodeo. But they've, uh, it's where all the rodeo stock buyers go to buy, like, bucket horses and bulls and stuff like that. So they'll, they'll, they, they used to do like 300 a day, 300 rides. Guys are just in the back, they rotate the cowboys. So, but the cool thing about it is, I've got a friend that's the head photographer there, and they'll let three or four of you out in the arena with them. So we the, just, I feel like you'd be like a circus clown. Like the bull would come after you. You are. You are, and you or, kind of, or a you rodeo kind of, clown. You yeah. kind of cue off the circus clowns, but the danger is not when they're bucking or doing their thing. It's when the the cowboys come off. That's when they go nuts, and then you know the cowboys come in to, to to wrangle them and get them out of there. But they're they're insane. Does your wife say, "Hey, 
why don't you not get so close to the bulls? She just ups the insurance, man. <laughs> <laughs> just in case. She, she don't care. Whenever Neon Moon went viral on TikTok, did you see it coming? Did you know that song, no. the version even? Not a clue. What? Not a clue. Didn't, didn't, didn't know where it came from. And uh, uh, Braden Carney, uh, 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 tech guy, called and said, this thing's blowing up. And so I have to get all the history and stuff from him and, and you know, like, go do the forensics and find out where it came from. But what what did you learn then through that? Because it's a it's a different like kind of dancey mix. Yeah. That everybody was doing like the little. Did you learn the dance? No. Oh, good. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we were we were encouraged to, but, but no, you know, we uh, no we didn't, didn't didn't do it. It's crazy. It's like look what I think it's up to three billion plays or something. In just the first two weeks, it was at one billion. Holy and then cow! Continue. I think Morgan did one. Yeah. I mean, it, it became quite the sense the the viral sensation. Yeah, I, just out of the blue. Kids, kids are approaching on the street. You're the TikTok guy. Yeah. yeah. Right, right. No. Yeah. Uh, Ronnie Dunn's here. New record coming out. So you're going to do all original songs this time? Mostly. Yeah? Yeah. I know Not, you did the record of uh, really awesome covers that had kind of influenced you. Yeah. So what, what are we talking here with this full album? This is this is more like stuff that's, that's kind of just what you heard with Broken Neon Hearts. It's kind of that, that vibe. Uh, a couple of new guys on it. Uh, Parker McCollum came over and, and, and uh, uh, sang one with me, and uh, it's uh, it's just that that stuff that that I I played coming through the bars, you know, in Oklahoma, Texas. That you know, if you were to look at the song and go, it's got a good beat, I can dance to it. You watch Yellowstone? Yeah, heck yeah. All the way through? Yeah. What do you think about the show? I love it. Did you know? And maybe you're smarter than I am. No. I agree. But I would think that the, the guy, Taylor Sheridan, who created the show, do you know he has a role on the show? Somebody was telling me about it yesterday. He's the, you know, the cowboy okay. that comes in to, to train their horses? The good okay, looking that's stuff. the guy. He's the yeah, guy who created yeah, the show yeah. and writes all the episodes. Uses the F word every five minutes. Yes, comes yes, all the time, drives guy. a big truck. So that's him. He that's created the show? He created the show. He's okay, the but, one that delivered Jimmy to the Sixes. Yeah, and, that's, and he then bought the Sixes Ranch, too. Yes. So he's, but I thought like, isn't he like for real, like a big horse trainer? Or, you or, have to be to look that good on a horse. Those right? horses are like serious. Like they're not just show horses for movies. They're like serious, serious horses. And I think that's probably why he excels in that role because he's really good at that. Yeah. Are you good at riding horses? No. And my my dad was a stable boy at uh, Keeneland, at, with around thoroughbreds. There was always a horse or something or two in the, in the backyard out in the pasture, but no. Uh -huh. You ever go to the races? You go to the horse races? Uh, he used to take me. Uh, he, um, this is a long story, but I'll make it quick. My dad and the sheriff of Port Isabel, Texas, so this is 100 years ago, uh, would get these old broken down uh, quarter horses and take them over into Mexico and race them on Sundays. They'd have uh, dirt tracks, quarter mile long, so it's just a sprint, portable uh, uh, gates and all this, and all all the locals would come down and put their their flatbed trucks with these big metal speakers on them, playing mariachi music all over the place. And they would go up and down that, those quarter mile tracks and take bets. Uh, so that's my well. Then this is what we should experience do. Experience with horses. Me and you. Follow me here, okay? Yeah. Me and you. Oakland Racetrack, Hot Springs, Arkansas. Uh huh. Your private jet. Okay. Huh? I leave it there. That's all Wait, I say. What? That's it. Let's go. What do you we'll, go we'll spend the day at the racetrack. Right. I don't know if I said, but your private jet. Sure. And then we go. And we we come back. Day out. We take our ladies. Yeah. We do a little gambling. Uh huh. We we live. I'll take the big jet. Man, there's what? there's you have a big sizes? you have a big and a little one and a hot air balloon. He's got it all. <laughs> take the hot air balloon. Got <laughs> take that. Check these. And uh, look, you, you, did you see what I had walking in? I did not. Oh yeah, I got Ronnie those boots. So. Hey. Yeah. You like them? I love them. Be honest. Right okay, look me in the eyeballs. Be honest. I'm asking you a real question. I like the boots. Oh, I'm going to ask you that question. All right. Because we're friends, and I don't want you to lie to me for on air. You didn't believe me. You. We were at the New Year's Eve gig, right? Yeah, me and you. Yeah. Yep. And, and we were standing around getting ready to go, about, go on. You were going to like you know, do your deal. And I looked down and saw those boots, and I went, those are cool. And you looked at me like, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going, no, I'm serious. It's like, yeah, right, whatever. And... uh we got on stage, and and I was still talking about it between songs. I'm going, look, Bobby, I really like those boots, man. It's just kind of like the, has that rockabilly look where they, they would put the the hand etched silver stuff on the tips and toes. And uh, 
you're like, you can't afford them. <laughs> I did say that. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> Obviously, yeah. I'm like you can't afford. Anyway, them. Anyway, we all, we all laugh because I, I might not be able to. But uh, anyway, next week I get a, a pair in the in the mail, and I like them. Have you worn them before this moment? Yes. Okay, and yeah. that's the truth. Yes. Well, great. Yeah. And I got the nicest gift from you. This I don't even want to know. It, this gigantic, awesome painting with the frame that probably costs more than the house. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's a buffalo, right? White buffalo. Yeah, white buffalo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's yeah. all. It, it's it's the great. It's the great. Be, it's cool to be friends with you because we don't have to hang out that much, and I can still say I'm friends with you. So I get yeah. all the credit in the world. Well, we we both kind of spent a lot of time in Arkansas too, so I, we kind of think the same dark thoughts. I'm sure. What was it like when you and Kix and Reba did your final show at that residency? Were you sad about it, or were you just happy? To no, no. You done? Yeah, his red roll. Yeah, seven years is is, is a long time. But you know, Adele you know. was got like the big fancy room. Did you guys have yeah. a big fancy room? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They hook you up. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. It was like a. They have a butler. Four thousand square foot. You know, it, I'm sure Adele's got something bigger, but uh, yeah. They and give you had, and kicks a different butlers? bed, or do you have the same bed? You guys <laughs> different rooms. <laughs> <We're in> different <laughs> towers. <laughs> One bedroom. First thing I ask is, is where's kicks stay? Okay, I want the other tower. <laughs> he does the same. <laughs> Would you ever, if you were to do a residency, I want you to follow me here. Yeah. With Garth Brooks, you could call it Garth Brooks and Dunn. Uh, Brooks and Ever Dunn. heard that? Garth Brooks and Dunn? Ever heard that? Yeah, yeah. Oh, you the, have. Right. It was backstage the uh, other day at the Songwriters Hall of Fame, and uh, I just I sang a Toby Keith or something. You know, I walked back, was talking to Kobe, and I hear this, Brooks and Dunn in the house. It was Garth. Anyway, so we, we go back and forth with that. I saw a picture of you with George Strait. Yeah. How long have you known George Strait? Oh, uh, long time. Years. Years. Were you guys ever – because – he didn't. Did he ever live here? Did George Strait ever live in Nashville? I don't think so. Did you guys ever hang out? Uh, we gambled together. That's what uh, I want to do with you. Yeah. Like, like in Vegas or? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I want to do it in Hot Springs, Arkansas. And you're a big jet. Uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> We're gone, baby. Let's do it. I saw a picture too of we'll you. We'll take our, our oaky girlfriends and go. That that is true. We both have them. Yeah. I want to ask you about because at one point it looked like you. I was looking at some old pictures. It looked like you dyed your hair blonde. Yeah. Did that ever happen where you where you did the... Why'd you bring that up? Well, because I saw it and I made sure to print it out so I wouldn't forget about it. When you die, how did that go down? Okay, this is my story and I'm going to stick to it. Okay. I had these, you, know, you have these stylists that come to video shoots and all that stuff. She goes, well, she says, your hair is kind of like bland. She said, let me like like just put some like sun streaks down. I said, okay, whatever. And uh, she got a little carried away with it and it... It came out like that. But and you, had, I, I you mean, looked in the mirror and thought you were hot, though, right, with the blonde hair? Because no, at the time, it was cool. No, I just said, you know what I always say? I swear to God. I said, uh, if George Strait sees me, he's going to kill me. I'm, I'm, I'm never going to hear the end of it. So that's uh, that's it. It's my conscience. My so what happens conscience. to her, her or someone that does that to your hair? She hasn't what been happens seen since. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She goes on vacation. <laughs> There's a hole in Vegas in the desert. <laughs> when is this new full full album coming out? Uh, when does know? it come out? A month. You just give me a general month. Uh, okay, there. like uh, <laughs> uh, uh, I see uh, September. Se- September. No. <laughs> Summer. 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 Whew. Thank so, you. And what Summer. do you do with this body of work? Do you go out and and sing the songs yourself? Uh, Are you going tour at all? I might. I might. Love that. Yeah, but it's fun now because you could. I, I mean, I'm trying to do all this stuff while I can still sing. You know, but you ha- you haven't you haven't dropped at all so far. And it's someday I, I'm gonna I'm gonna wake up and you know do ee- and it's not gonna come out like, like that. Then you can yeah. just change the key. Maybe I saw Elton John sing once. He never got higher than yeah. this. Elton Elton's kind of he's just kind of he's he admits it. He talks about it. He says he can, he's probably strained it or something at some point a little bit. Do you do like anything John. to keep your voice? I wouldn't say in shape, but to make sure that it lasts a long time. No, no. When I'm on the road, I just try to I try to get a lot of rest and uh, drink water. You know, after the whiskey, I chase the whiskey with water. Do you still drink whiskey though? Yeah, every now and then. But uh, come on, no. You don't have to maintain the. We we, we do a ceremonial uh, shot before we walk on stage. Always have, and we have a, a box that's like an actual rolling kind of liquor cabinet or something. But it's just one thing in it. Listen, broken neon hearts. It is out today. I think the song is A+. Not only am I going to play it on this show, I'm going to feature it in our national countdown. 
and I'm going to tell everybody, and we're going to play it on this show. We're going to make a big deal about it. Uh, Ronnie Dunn, you can follow him. Go to his Instagram just to see his his photography work. Like, it really is next level, so much so that I thought there's no way he took that picture. But That's you did. That's cool. Yeah. Well, good. It's good to hear you say that. You're <laughs> yeah. a man of taste. Yeah, at Ronnie Dunn. I am a man of taste. Good right. taste. Ronnie, good to see you. Good there he is. Everybody, let's clap for yeah. our friend Ronnie Dunn. There he is. Thanks, Bobby. It's, it's about-